Okay, quick recap. You breathe air because you need oxygen to stay alive. That oxygen enters through your lungs and gets distributed all throughout your body. You need oxygen on a cellular level so your cells can use it to turn food into energy and carbon dioxide as a waste product. Oxygen gets to every corner of your body by way of your blood and red blood cells. Sure, your blood does a lot more than that, but the primary job is to get oxygen to your cells and carbon dioxide out of them. Pretty much everyone knows how this works up to this level, but that leaves a pretty big question for us. How does your blood, like, know where to drop off that oxygen? The answer is a little bit complex and a lot of bit fascinating. To unpack this process, we're going to have to look not at your blood, not at your blood cells, but at this chemical inside them, hemoglobin. The symmetry in the structure and function of this goofy-looking bundle of polypeptides is responsible for so much that keeps you alive and high-functioning every single day. Discovering how hemoglobin transports oxygen is the singular beautiful fact that made me fall in love with biology forever. And over the next few minutes, we're going to explore it together. So, let's roll with the basics. Hemoglobin is a protein, which means it's made of the same stuff your cells, hair, and muscles are. Proteins are pretty much the most important thing your cells produce as they go about the millisecond by millisecond business of keeping you alive, but you knew that. Specifically, hemoglobin is a tetramer protein made up of four subunits. These four puzzle pieces are mostly made up of a kind of structure called an alpha helix. The way those helixes are put together is pretty important, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. The real star of the show here is embedded in all four of those subunits, the heme group. Here you've got a big, beautiful iron atom with just enough structural lattice attached to it to allow it to glom on to the rest of these globin proteins. That iron is ultimately what oxygen it attaches to. It's also what turns your blood red. But the heme group isn't the whole story. The shape of the rest of these globin proteins is what really makes this work. Because hemoglobin rules at carrying oxygen due to the fact that hemoglobin is kinda actually terrible at binding to oxygen, at least compared to other molecules. Specifically, myoglobin, found in your muscles, is awesome at sucking up oxygen and terrible at giving it up. That makes it a great place to store the oxygen you breathe. But to get oxygen transported all throughout your body, hemoglobin needs the ability to let go of it as well. And the way this happens is wild, but we gotta cover one more thing before we get there. Like I said, hemoglobin is primarily made up of these protein chains, and scientists weren't being cute when they called them chains either. When your cells make proteins like this, it puts them together one link at a time, one molecule at a time, in a chain. You've got 21 possible links called amino acids, each with their own little flavor, their own little way of bending the chain. Some are electrically charged, some are hydrophobic, and so on. Little by little, the chain bends as you add new links, and with enough length, these proteins bend into really complex 3D shapes. Those shapes are precise, and they determine how that protein works. That's one of the number one mantras you're going to hear in biology. Structure equals function. There are a lot of these tiny, weak, little electrochemical interactions that give proteins their shape. One of the more fundamental ones for hemoglobin's curly helix structure is the hydrogen bond, an interaction between hydrogen and oxygen molecules in an atom. You've already seen how hydrogen bonds work because of water. For a quick refresh, hydrogen bonds are responsible for why water behaves the way it does. Water beads up like this because of how strong the hydrogen bonds between each little water molecule are. Alone, these interactions are weak, but in aggregate, they're really strong. Unless an outside force acts on them, I mean. They aren't as rock solid as regular chemical bonds. And this is the cool part, and this is why I brought it up in the first place. Because there are so many different flavors of these little attractions, some proteins are a little flexible. They get tense and relax and warp depending on the conditions. If it gets a little too hot or cold, the protein changes shape. If they get exposed to a little acid or a little alkali, same story. The shape changes, the function changes. Never forget, structure equals function. Life requires really specific conditions to work. That's why your body is constantly hustling to keep you at a certain specific temperature range and your insides at a certain set of pH conditions. And those conditions affect how well hemoglobin binds to oxygen. So, finally back to how hemoglobin is so good at both picking up and dropping off oxygen. This starts to be incredible because hemoglobin is at its most relaxed and it's most able to pick up oxygen when it's an environment that is extremely full of oxygen, where the oxygen concentration is super high. There's only one place in your body where the oxygen concentration is maxed out. You wanna take a guess? It's in your lungs, right after you've taken a big breath of fresh air. 
and hemoglobin is at its worst state. It's least likely to bind with oxygen in an area where the pH of your blood is more acidic, where the pH is a little lower. So where does that happen? Another quick recap, you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. Because in your cells, using oxygen to turn food into energy leaves carbon dioxide as a byproduct, an actually kind of toxic one. That's why you have to get rid of it. As your cells use up the oxygen they have, CO2 builds up. When oxygen goes down, CO2 goes up. That CO2 gets really concentrated in those cells and the blood around them. And here's the crazy thing. As the concentration of CO2 in your cells goes up, enzymes in your blood break it down into carbonic acid lowering the pH. Do you see where I'm going with this? Hemoglobin gets super tense in areas where pH is lower. Its shape changes just enough that it's actually terrible at binding with oxygen. So hemoglobin lets it go. Even better, in this state, hemoglobin is way better at binding with stuff that carbon dioxide is made out of. So oxygen leaves, and CO2 joins the party. Wherever your body needs oxygen, there is a buildup of CO2. And hemoglobin is fine-tuned to release oxygen in places where there's too much carbon dioxide. That's what's incredible about this. Hemoglobin isn't some magic bean. Your blood doesn't know where to drop off oxygen. Instead, the process is a consequence of incredibly precise interactions, astonishingly focused design. Every single little chemical reaction that happens in your body has a purpose, and they all add up to keep you alive, to keep you moving, to keep you doing everything that you do. Once you understand this, you start seeing these interactions everywhere. Knowing this is the foundation of the wonder I feel for the world. Life isn't magic, life isn't inscription, with the scientific method and a few hundred years of collective knowledge, you begin to understand one thing. Life just works. And that's the answer at the core of every question you ask in biology class. It's figuring out the how and the why life works at the chemical level that's really fascinating. And hemoglobin is just one small example of that. Thank you. If you like this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below, and also share this if at all possible. I'm basing the release schedule for future episodes in this series off the initial response here, so subscribing is really huge for this one to figure out if we're going to release these bi-weekly, monthly, or even weekly. I really appreciate all of your support and really cannot express to you enough how much I appreciate you sticking it out to the end of this video. My real hope here is that this serves as a kind of gateway drug for you to really get into the complexities of biochemistry, so if you liked this, I I really recommend you check out our website, clockwork.show, where we have a post exploring more detail of how hemoglobin works. It's very difficult to cover all of the complexities of how hemoglobin works in an eight-minute internet video, and some of the details we chose to gloss over almost range into the area of misinformation. So I hope you check out that blog post and see a more richly detailed version of how this works. Either way, I can't thank you enough for sticking around to the end, but as always, I like to leave you with peace, love, and ligands. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.